Hello and welcome to a video that I hope uh, you guys enjoy. Today I want to talk about the Avengers Infinity War slash Endgame uh, movies. Basically what I think is happening, what I want to happen, what I think is going to happen, how I want it, how I want this whole Endgame movie to end, right? So now, knowing how the internet is, I can only expect hostilities from you guys in the comments, which is fine. Um, I am not going to block off comments, but, you know, I have no spoilers here also. I don't know what's going to happen. This is just me babbling about what I think is going to happen, what I want, and what I want to happen, right? Okay. So here you're watching uh, Thanos and Strange talk, and they're going to go through the whole battle, right? Okay. So, I I wanted to make this video because I've seen a lot of theories online about uh, how this movie will end, how it uh, how a lot of people think will end, and I think we can all come to the conclusion that time travel will be involved somehow. We all know how we want Endgame to end, right? The Avengers somehow undo what Thanos did with the snap of his fingers, and everything goes back to quote normal. And I think that all of us have come to accept that time travel will somehow be involved, right? After all, that's how Logan slash Wolverine won in the X-Men movies. Remember that? Uh, Days of Future Past, right? Which is also another Marvel franchise. And while we're on the subject, I don't know how people started to talk about how Wolverine would get involved in the Avengers movies. Maybe because Thanos has those uh, three linear scars on his face right there? I don't know. You know? It, and it's reminiscent of Wolverine's class, but okay, whatever. But that's the theory for another day. I'm not getting into that right now. Hey, what was that? Uh, so a lot of other people on, on YouTube and a lot of other sites have noted that Doctor Strange did in fact travel forward in time to see how the Avengers will win, right? Nobody has really talked about how he may have gone back in time to warn the rest of the MCU characters about Thanos. In science fiction, it wouldn't make sense for a character to travel just forward in time to fix things. It always makes sense to go back in time to fix a timeline. Like in Back to the Future 2 or in The Butterfly Effect. So how does Doctor Strange's plan come into place and how does the he indeed guarantee that the Avengers triumph over Thanos? After all, if he travels back in time to warn everyone and if, it's, if something goes wrong because, you know, just human nature, we're imperfect by nature, um, they'll lose, right? And then, and after all, only one out of over 14 million possibilities turn out in favor of the Avengers. Which brings up another point a lot of other people have asked. Couldn't Doctor Strange trap Thanos in the time loop like he did with Dormammu? Am I saying that right? Well, basically Thanos having several Infinity Stones can overpower him. And in the final battle between Thanos and Strange, we actually do see Doctor Strange trap Thanos. And then Strange tries to bring down Thanos using the Soul Stone to find out who he is, so we all know that, right? Basically, Thanos is too powerful and too smart to let Strange trap him in the mirror dimension or a time loop um, in an obvious way, I guess. Or is he too smart? We'll find out. I think Doctor Strange realizes this. When he travels forward in time to see the battle, he has to let Thanos win, which is why he goes back in time. Not only to warn everybody, but to also trap everyone in a time loop. A time loop that contains all of the MCU, all of the actual universe, with all of the characters. And how does the time loop reset itself even though Strange died and time kept on going forward? I think that the time loop resets based on Tony Stark's life. This explains why Strange asked Thanos to not kill Tony, because the time loop couldn't reset at that point. It had to reset after Thanos, quote, wins. Like in Back to the Future Part 2, you have to let a person think he or she has succeeded in their plan of, of uh, changing the timeline, and then undo it, because if you stop that person, in the case, like in the case of Thanos, from succeeding, if you stop it, you kind of alter the timeline, and it looks it's very weird, and you have to kind of undo the mess. Because if you don't, then there is no incentive for you to go back in time, you know, a time paradox, right? Just like in Back to the Future 2. Now, I know Back to the Future 2 and this movie 
or this franchise has nothing, they don't have anything in common, just time travel, right? But we'll stick to that because that's the, one of the most popular time travel movies that I've seen and I actually do enjoy watching a lot. And why do I think Tony Stark will die not just once, but several times if this time loop thing occurs? Because he is lost in space and there is only a remote possibility that he will be rescued. If and when Tony Stark dies in space, the time loop resets to somewhere in the past, maybe somewhere around the time where the Avengers Stay take on. place, which is why we all saw those pictures of Chris Evans wearing that Captain America gear from the first battle in New York, right? On the set of Endgame. So we saw those, those uh, pictures. And why do I think the time loop rests on Tony Stark's life? Well, like I said, the chances of him being rescued are slim. He says in the Endgame trailer that it's zero chance of rescue, right? Promise of rescue is more fun so for time to keep moving forward, he has to be alive. From which is why we saw the trailer, four days ago. you know, the green light shining on Tony Stark. And we all saw this other picture on Instagram that goes on to show that um, every single original Avenger has a different lighting effect to them. And the lighting effect on Tony was green, and that indicates that it has to do something with the time stone, even though Doctor Strange is the time stone keeper. So that means that the time resets based on Tony Stark or on his life. Okay, so that is Doctor Strange's plan, to go back in time, guide key characters on what to do and when to do it to ensure they win. This is why when he, when he goes back and... Sorry, no. This is why when Nick Fury saw everybody vanish, he knew exactly what to do. Call Captain Marvel. Maybe at the end of her movie, she's stuck somewhere or tucked away safely in another reality or dimension, just like Ant-Man was. Remember at the end of uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, he went into the quantum realm for a little bit, you know, because they were testing the machines. And before he was able to be pulled back out, his uh, Michael Douglas character and Michelle Pfeiffer's character both vanished into, um, into ashes, right? So maybe he was meant to die as well, maybe he wasn't, I don't know. But the point is that him being there, for whatever reason, maybe helped him not die. Maybe not. Maybe he was still going to be alive regardless. But anyway, uh, so that could, have Captain, that could have happened to Captain Marvel as well. And that's why the pager looks super weird. Maybe Thanos or his goons had to, quote, think they defeated Captain Marvel to temporarily take her out of the equation and ensure she'd be alive for the fight that matters. Which is why we see one of Thanos' children carry Captain Marvel's cape slash towel slash garment at the beginning of Infinity War. So there we go. Nick Fury is a key character. Obviously, he's the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, so he was told, when you see this happen, you need to contact Captain Marvel. And maybe she contacts us, uh, Ant-Man. I don't know, but that's what I think. Another key character is obviously Tony Stark. But remember, the least you know about your own future, the better, right? That's uh, also again from Back to the Future Part 2. Or in Part 3, actually. So while Doctor Strange was on, uh, on Titan traveling to the future, he also went to the past somewhere in time to tell Tony what to do to ensure they win. And why do I think Tony did something different than he normally would have done? Well, there are actually five points in Infinity War where Tony Stark slash Iron Man's behavior was completely not what I expected and what I believe are key points in the plot to ensure that that one outcome of the 1400, uh, 14 million happened. So there, here are the five points that I think are show that Tony Stark knew he had to make a choice, a, a difficult choice, and he had to guide the movie or the plot forward in that manner. One, when... After he meets up with Doctor Strange, they go to the New York Sanctum. Sanctum, And Tony is leaning on the cauldron of the cosmos, stretching. Doctor Strange liter literally hits him, and, he, and Tony doesn't do anything. Not even one snarky remark, just lets it slide. Now, you could say that this is character growth on his part, especially after Iron Man 3, but I still don't like how that, how that scene happens. Not because I think it's bad or anything, I think it does show a key point in uh, Tony Stark's life, but because it's very counterintuitive to how I think Tony Stark would have responded, or at least the younger Tony Stark, right? The second point is when Bruce asks him to call Captain America and he is hesitant, but you can tell his intention is to call him. 
he just gets sidetracked by the whole giant spaceship moving everything, including Strange's hair thing having going on, you know? I really thought his ego slash feelings wouldn't let him call Captain America. But if you just think that if you just think that then you're missing the point. Something or someone told him to carry that phone with him on that day, or maybe all the time because he would need Cap's help. Remember, this guy is, has a huge ego. He doesn't think he needs anybody's help. So why would he want to carry an old phone to help, you know, to help, um, to call Captain for help? I mean, we're talking about Tony Stark here. He's the smartest human being outside of Wakanda and with a nanotech suit. And he just happens to also be carrying a flip phone to communicate with a hundred year old Cap. Come on. Doctor Strange must have told him to always have the lines of communication open with Cap. Sure, you could argue that he could have upgraded the device and kept the same phone number, but there is no need for that if you know you will only be using that phone once. So that's what I think. You know, he actually was trying to call him, but then I think maybe he knew that he that was too soon in, in, in the events to call Captain America. Okay. So, but you can tell that he was carrying that with him, so that was important. You know, and then and if you if you watch uh, this movie, Infinity War, with the with the director's cut, you'll see you'll hear the director say that yeah, that's a crucial moment, and you know he's carrying that phone. The third time Tony Stark surprised me what, with his behavior in this movie, Infinity War, was on the flying donut billions of miles from Earth when he encounters Peter. Tony thought he was taken back home, but he was genuinely surprised to see him. Why though? He knows how Peter is. And he knows he think uh, Peter thinks so highly of Tony, so he wants to help him, right? He's just like that. So Tony should know that already. I think he was in shock right after their quick exchange because he knew what was going to happen because Strange told him, you know what, you need to go to Titan and you need to do this. And then maybe he even knew that Peter was going to die, you know? Maybe he knew that that was going to happen and he just didn't want to witness it. You know, maybe that's what he didn't want to lose Peter, right? Maybe he knew that Peter's going to die, but he didn't want to really accept it. Also, that's part of the plan, right? So, I mean, it has to happen. Also, what caught me off guard is that he kind of stares into space. Robert Downey Jr. is a great actor, and all of the directors and the, and these movie, and the both directors of the movie are very talented as well. So everything that a character does is also, is always on purpose, I think. I feel that in this point, maybe from somewhere in the future, he used Barf to try and experience what he had with Peter, just like he used it in Civil War in the demo with his parents. He wanted to kind of relive that because he missed Peter. Maybe somewhere in the future, he comes back and he's trying to see how he could change it, maybe try to get one last conversation and one last memory in with Peter because he misses him, right? It's like his kid. Remember, at the beginning of the movie, he's talking about having a kid, and at the end, he uh, Peter dies, which is kind of like his kid. His um, uh, not really his kid, but more like his um. Uh, what do you call it? His um, his mentor, not his mentor. His uh, his apprentice, I guess you could call it. Or maybe Doctor Strange just told them something like, "Hey, let him help you. Let him help you, or let this play out because this is part of the plan, right?" The fourth time he surprised me was when he and Strange were talking. Tony wants to bring the fight to Thanos, which kind of makes sense, but not really. However, at first glance, it might seem like he just doesn't want to ask Cap for help, which makes sense after what happened in Civil War. Maybe because he knows it's too early for Cap to help. Maybe it's because he wants to save people on Earth, especially Pepper and all of the other Avengers. But if he really thinks, quote, this is like when he... But if he really thinks, quote, that there, that this is it, like he said in the Sanctum when they were all talking together, Wong, Dr. Strange, Bruce, and Tony, then why wouldn't he ask for help? If he really does think this is it, he would have asked the rest of the Avengers for help, right? Well, why didn't he? Or why did he choose to go to Titan? One, because there is no time. Remember, this takes place on Earth in, in one Earth day. And two... Because he knows that he's trying to convince Doctor Strange of what Strange told Tony to do and say even though it may not make sense to the present Strange. Does that make sense? 
Maybe Doctor Strange saw the future and went back in time to that point to tell him that they need to go to Titan because that battle needs to take place. Tony seemed to have not really thought about it while speaking with Strange and so that's why I think that exchange was crucial and a little bit off. Think about it, Tony is an engineer slash scientist slash genius, so he needs to solve problems in an orderly manner or just impulsively so just impulsively trying to take on Thanos with just two guys and himself doesn't seem like the best solution at that time. But again, it's part of a plan that needs to proceed. The fifth and last time I think Tony's behavior was weird and kind of indicative of something telling him that what to do or how to do it or when to do it was on Titan itself right before the battle with uh, Thanos. So when he was trying to lay out the plan of attack against Thanos together with the Guardians of the Galaxy, basically Star-Lord slash Quail insults him and his intelligence by telling him, telling Tony that his plan sucks. And again, Tony kind of just stares into space away from Strange, and he just accepts it and lets Quill kind of take the lead. Of course, this could be to the fact that Robert's contract is up and he needs to let others take a more central role in the MCU, but I think it's weird because he doesn't argue or offend Star-Lord back, kind of. You know, he calls him um, Flash Gordon, but that's not really an insult. You know, it's kind of like he kind of just lets him take over. It's just weird. You know, you wouldn't think that an, a man with such a huge ego like Tony would let somebody, some other younger guy take over, right? So, it, I mean, so he must know that this has to play out in a certain way. And so that's why I think that Doctor Strange's plan... That's, that's what I think uh, is his plan. To recap, he goes back in time and guides key characters in the MCU to that one scenario he knows will end in their favor. The time loop resets with Tony's deaths, death and the process keeps going until the, the Avengers finally win. win. That is why it's called Infinity War because it keeps happening on and on, and on like, the, like the Infinity Symbol, right? I also wanted to include that Strange would have gone back in time to visit the Black Panther, and I think he does, but there just wasn't really in a, any evidence on that to include it here. But I do think it's odd that T'Challa um, is willing to sacrifice all of his soldiers, his family, and himself for the Mind Stone and that one metallic robot Jarvis dude. I mean, he's king. He could have easily said, you know what? No, we destroyed the Mind Stone and tell Thanos, Thanos' people that, you know, we destroyed it, sorry, better luck next time. And if they still want to fight, fine, we'll fight, but there's no point because the time, the Mind Stone is gone. So, but it doesn't really make sense to go through all that trouble. The only reason why he would agree to this is if he knew that there was a higher purpose. Mainly, Doctor Strange had to have told him this, or somebody that knowing of you know Doctor Strange's plan who had to have told them you know what you have to make the sacrifice maybe if the time loop resets then it doesn't really matter how many of his people die right I mean you could argue that too so that's it those are my uh, that's my analysis for these two movies let me know what you guys think and feel free to take it apart and tell me that I'm wrong yes I didn't include anything from the comic books because one I don't read comic books uh, two, the movies are very clearly off the comic book timeline and the comic book plot. And you know this because a lot of other people that have that know a lot about the comic books have said this already, have done that analysis. And three, the directors of Infinity War have come out and said, hey, you know what? It doesn't make sense to basically just put what's on paper in the comic books on the big screen. It doesn't make sense to do that because the story's already been told. It, it, people already know how it's going to end, so why would we want... Why would somebody want to go watch a movie of something they already know how it's going to end? Especially the hardcore fans, right? You could argue that it's an adaptation, but then that's what, that's what they said. So there you go. Take, it, take that however you will. Let me know in the comments again if I uh, messed this up completely. If you like it, if you agree with some points, I'm pretty sure some of you would agree with some points and some of you and most of you would disagree with most of my points so let me know i'll catch you on my next one bye